Hey there, Sagittarius, Sagittarius, welcome to your reading for July 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. Also in the description box, you will find links to calculate both your east, your, your I'm sorry, your western um, astrolog astrological chart or your eastern chart. Now, I had that information in there a few months ago for quite some time, um, but I, I ended up, you know, deleting a lot of that because I felt like there was too much going on in there. But I did feel like I wanted to put it back. Um, so I did. Those are in the description box right now. Personally, I, re I, I resonate more with the eastern side of things than I do, uh, than I do with the western um, side, but it's all what works best for you, all what you feel is best for yourself, and all honestly, all whatever you feel like you're resonating with the most, okay? Um, so if you want to, if you're feeling like, uh, like, you know, having a video binge, you could watch, like, the main readings for your Western side, and then watch the main readings for your Eastern side, and see which ones resonate best with you, Yeah. Either way, it really doesn't matter either way. They're all, they're both very valid systems. I personally just find that I resonate with the other, with the Eastern side more. So I just wanted to put that out there for you guys in case you were interested in, in, in um, investigating and figuring that out for yourself, seeing which one you resonate with more. Okay, excellent. So let's get into your situation here, Sagittarius. So um, first things first, it's funny because I'm sitting here, I'm, you know, I'm going to be, I'm doing these readings. Um, you're the first reading, uh, collective reading that I'm doing for the Zodiac signs for today. Um, and I'm chunking them out. I'm doing them like three at a time. So I'm doing Sagittarius and I'm doing Capricorn and then I'm doing Aquarius all in this one session. Um, not this one video, but you get it one, in this one sitting. And as I was getting ready to channel, like just channeling the energies and preparing for the three videos for these three signs, Capricorn kept coming out really strong. Um, and I don't know if either, I didn't know at the moment whether that was maybe there was just a really intense message coming forward for Capricorn or if it meant something else. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. So now I'm doing the pre-shuffle or I have a bit of a pre-shuffle here for you Sagittarius and none other, none other than Capricorn popped out very first. You could be dealing with a Capricorn. There could be some sort of Capricorn energy in your life, whether that's in your chart or in your surrounding area, uh, environment, I should say, that is really affecting you or um, you know, you're dealing with at this time. I'm hearing that it's challenging. Um, and for a Sagittarian, the energy of, a, of Capricorn, even though it's the next sign, like right after you in the Zodiac, I do kind of see how the energy of Capricorn, the solid, stable, grounded, um, business oriented, physically oriented, career oriented, just really like put together energy of Capricorn could be really difficult for someone who is like deep in their Sagittarian energy to deal with. Um, it's like, it's almost like they're opposing, they're like opposites in a way, just in how they feel, how they move, how they react to the world and all that. Now this doesn't have to be a Capricorn that you're dealing with, um, because also, yes, I did notice that this came out first and the devil does represent Capricorn energy, but also the devil just represents addiction, codependency, um, just toxicity and all that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing that I picked up on with this with this devil energy is kind of the debaucherous nature that, or the, the, the debaucherous side that sometimes a Sagittarian can slip into, yeah? Um, but, but things are changing for the better. I don't want you to feel like, get discouraged or anything. This, because after that came the Wheel of Fortune and then also the Three of Pentacles. And then after all that, underneath the deck, you have the King of Swords. So you also could be dealing with an Aquarian, um, maybe another air sign, or maybe there's air in your chart, uh, Gemini or Libra. Maybe there's Aquarius in your chart. Doesn't have to be. What I'm picking up here for you, Sagittarius, is that you're kind of... Ex oh, God, excuse me. You're kind of in an energy of... Um, trying to better yourself, 
trying to master yourself. And that's what we have here with the Three of Pentacles. And, and this represents, this can represent self-mastery. You also could be working on developing a new business. The Three of Pentacles does kind of speak of entrepreneurship. Because it is the Pentacles uh, suit, you could definitely be dealing with um, finances and career. Uh, especially with the devil here, which is represents Capricorn in the Zodiac. And I do see, I like to see Capricorn as kind of like the CEO of, of the Zodiac. So there are a number of things that I'm seeing here. One, either you are working on dealing with some sort of addictions, some sort of codependency, or so just some sort of toxic behavior or environment or people around you in terms of in, in terms of bettering yourself, bettering your life, um, maybe even getting healthier. It's as if, like, especially with this Wheel of Fortune energy here, it's as if the time has come for you, ugh, I'll say it this way because this is what I'm hearing, the time has finally come for you to grow up in a sense. And I really, I, I say that, take that with a grain of salt because I am definitely not the type of person to ever recommend that you grow up to such an extent that you're now, you've lost your zest for life or you've lost that spark of wonder or excitement that comes with or comes from being connected with your inner child, okay? But it does feel like for those of you that are resonating with this part of the message, it does feel like there are some elements to your life that you're finally willing and ready to put to rest. And that's what this King of Swords energy is saying. The King of Swords is looking at the situation as objectively as possible. No shade, no um, animosity, no real judgment. The only judgment that comes into play here is whether or not this is something that is beneficial to you as you move forward because your life is in fact changing for the better with the wheel of fortune and the three of pentacles um so the only judgment that the king of swords is really putting into this situation is whether or not something is best for you moving forward they're really i don't feel like and maybe this is the advice that you might need for this type of moment for you I would not recommend that you waste any of your time or energy trying to judge others for their roles in whatever the situation is that's coming to the forefront for you. Instead, just look at the situation as objectively as possible and ask yourself, is this where I want to be moving forward? Do, is this in alignment with where I see myself growing, growing or what I see myself becoming on, later on down the road? And if not, just simply cut it out. King of Swords, just simply just cut it out. It's not even a diplomacy. It's all about diplomacy. This has nothing to do with any of the other people or the, the circumstances or the situations around you. It has everything to do with what is best for yourself. Now, the other thing that I'm, I'm also picking up on here, Sagittarius, is you could be in an energy of working on building your own business. Um, starting from scratch even. And that's definitely where the devil comes in only because there are so many different pieces that you would need to keep track of or that you would need to become aware of, plan for. And there could be some fear. There could be some fear surrounding this, but also the message of being chained or... Um, it, it, it's almost, I almost I kind of want to say conformity because there are certain elements or certain ways that you have to approach something in order to get a certain result. Now, it all doesn't have to look the same, and that's kind of where the devil comes in. But there are general methods of doing things that you may not necessarily be so fond of, you may really not know too much about. Um, and so you, that could be holding you back a little bit. This is kind of like a necessary evil type of energy, okay? And then with the Wheel of Fortune and the Three of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune talking about um, going with the shift of time and energy within the universe and just allowing the universe to help guide you in the steps that you would need to take to build this process, to, 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 to go through the process of building this energy 
empire, this environment, this new job, this, this entrepreneurship endeavor, if you will, for yourself. Keeping in mind that you need to stay as objective as possible. Yes? All right, Sag. That seems pretty good. All, I mean, and in all, that feels great. It really does feel good. Even, I mean, especially the part about clearing up any sort of like toxicity in your life or whatnot, like that feels the best. I would say for those of you that are in fact trying to go in a new direction career-wise, it doesn't even really have to be career-wise. It could be, um, Three of Pentacles does represent entrepreneurship. It also does represent working with others. So maybe this is like a, a, a rebuilding or refinement of a current environment a career environment or job environment that involves teamwork. But it really doesn't even need to be business. It could just be your physical life. The Three of Pentacles isn't just about career, money, and, and all that stuff. It's about your, also it's about your physical representation, uh, your physical manifestation in this existence, yes? So even that feels, that aspect of it feels good too. That just does feel a little more uncomfortable than maybe um, clearing up some negativity or toxicity in your life. Mainly because it's a brand new thing. It's probably something that you're not really all that used to. You may even be getting deeper into spirituality. Yeah, and the devil is popping up saying, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. And this is how you are, this is how you are supposed to be. You're supposed to be five of swords. This is how you're supposed to be if you are a spiritual person. Fuck that. Just look. Don't even waste your time with that. There are as many paths to God, to source, to creator, to oneness, uh, there, uh, however you... However you identify with it, there are as many spiritual paths to walk as there are individuals on this planet as human beings. And then, and, it, and it's infinite because there are as many spiritual paths to walk as there are beings in all of existence. Okay, so the devil comes in in that sense and tries to tell you, no, you have to do it this way. If you're not doing it this way and it does look, doesn't look like this and you're not getting these specific results, then you're not doing it right or you're not on the right path. And that is bullshit, all right? So if anybody is trying to tell you that, honey, tune them out, let that go in one ear and right back out the other and you just keep your head high and keep working on you and what your life represents, what your spiritual path is, what your individual personal journey is, yes? Okay, so let me shuffle this up and once and then we will get right into your reading. All right, Sag. Sagimatazical. First you were Sagimataz and now you're Sagimatazical. I like it. Progress. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of July 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm gonna give this th five shuffles. Yes, five shuffles, and then we'll get started. Keep in mind, guys, that these messages are timeless. So just because it's coming through for the month of July, it doesn't mean it has to resonate in July. This could resonate at any moment for you, okay? The time frame, as in when they're dated for, it's really just for organizational purposes. Um, so if it's like, say August or September of 2019 or even August or September of 2020 and you're watching this reading now and it resonates for you, then take it because that's the message for you at that moment in time, okay? Two more shuffles, Sag, and then we'll see what we've got for the month of July. Messages for the month of July 2019. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. All right. Sag and Metazical. Boop. All right. 
overall energy. Ooh, way that Knight of Swords. Yeah, and that actually makes a whole lot of sense because I really do feel like on a mental front, you are kind of charging into battle here, but this is you, I really do kind of feel like something has put some sort of pep in your step, or I feel like there is a bit of an awakening that's happening here for the Sagittarians that I'm channeling for, because this is really, I really feel like this Knight of Swords energy is you charging in to make some changes. Yeah, let's leave it at that. You're charging in to make some changes to, I guess, to fuck some shit up or to like, to, you know, just. <laughs> okay, this is how it's coming through, so I'm going to say it. And especially, and it makes sense. Oh, shoot. It makes sense because it's the Knight of Swords. So, like, um, destroy some shit. Tear some shit down and, and make way for change right? And the Knight of Swords energy is the type of energy that charges into battle that, I'm sorry if you're hearing stuff on the microphone, it's my necklace hitting the mic. I'm sorry if it's bothering you. I'm going to try and work at something out that's better. But back to the reading. You are charging in to make some sort of change. And the Knight of Swords is that energy that charges into battle to fight, whether he's on the offensive or the defensive, okay? So it's not, it's really not a bad thing that this Knight of Swords is here. All right, Sagittarius. And then there's the world. Yeah, but I do feel like you are actively starting. You're, you're in a position right now where you do need to take some action in order to really bring this change or this closing out of some sort of cycle here for you, okay? And then you have, yeah, the Ten of Wands. See, now this is the energy combined with the Knight of Swords. This is the energy that the Knight of Swords is like battling against. What is no longer valid for you? What is obsolete in your life? What is all the dead weight that you're carrying? And working on releasing yourself from it. Ooh, and then you have the hermit. And this is the energy that I was talking about. For those of you that are really on, or that are really going through some sort of awakening right now, and you're starting to really get into spirituality rather than just religion, or maybe you're even coming out of some sort of atheism or agnostic, ag agnostic belief or faith or something like that. As agnostics don't really have faith, do they? I, I don't. I don't know. And I'm not trying to pass judgment. I'm just. I'm just trying to speak as clearly and concisely as possible and coherently as possible. But. Um, this, the hermit is literally what I was seeing when I was describing those of you that are entering some sort of spirituality and are battling what's right and what's wrong or the right way of doing, uh, of being a spiritual person and the wrong way of being a spiritual person. Keep in mind, guys, and this is where the devil comes in. Those in the spiritual world that say you have to do it in this way or it has to look like this, or you have to meditate X amount of times, or you have to eat this type of food, or you have to do this type of practice, or you're not really spiritual, is just, those people are, are, are mirroring religion. They're being, they're, uh, they are expressing dogma the same way that organized religion does. And so that's like, there's no difference there. They're literally mirroring each other. Spiritual, a spiritual path, at least in my, in my opinion, you can feel free to agree with me. I'm sorry, feel free to agree with me or disagree with me. And I'm, I'm, but this is just from my perception, this is how I see it. Spirituality or walking a spiritual path is way more liberating than being forced to follow some sort of dogma. Right now, if that dogma resume, resonates with you and if it's actually benefiting you on your path, please, by all means, follow it. But here, the hermit is talking about you walking your own path, finding your own inner light, going within and finding the truth as it resonates with you instead of allowing someone else external to you tell you what that truth is and then you basically forcing yourself to assimilate or integrate that truth. That's not what we're asking you for here, says spirit, says the divine, says the universe. We're asking you to find your own truth. And that is what the Knight of Swords represents in this case, if that resonates with you. The Knight of Swords is also helping you bring anything into completion that needs to come to completion and cut out these burdens that you're carrying that are obsolete, okay? Literally just dead weight. 
All right, Sag Metaphysical. So let's get into the rest of your reading here, first half and second half of the reading. Now, you could look at this as the first half and the second half of your month. However, I recommend that you look at it as the first half and second half of the reading because energies are fluid and time is an illusion. And so these, these messages can intertwine within each other in any, in infinite ways, yeah? But whatever resonates with you the most is what I recommend you go with, yes? Okay. Getting into the first half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Sagittarius. You have the Nine of Wands. Battered and bruised and just freaking fed up. I get it. I get it. For some of you, you have been plugging along on this journey for so freaking long. Or plugging along in this way, in this specific way for you for so long. And you're finally getting to the point, 10 of wands, okay? So that's like the, the dead weight, the overburdenness, the, the burdens that you just don't need, no, no longer need to carry, right? It's led you to be battered and bruised and almost kind of wanting to give up. But the nine of wands, the silver lining of the nine of wands is talking about perseverance, not giving up. Because you don't have to give up. You just have to change your approach. You've got to go with the approach that you've got to take the path of least resistance. And that path is unique to you. Now, you can talk to people, people that you respect, admire, get opinions and insight or gu guidance from people, but ultimately, you really need to follow your own inner guidance. And maybe some of the guidance that you're getting from other people will lead you to the information that you need to make your own conclusion, right? But don't give up, just change your approach. Nine of Wands is coupled with <laughs> the Queen of Swords. I love that. I freaking love that because you got the King of Swords in the pre-shuffle and now you've got the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Swords is actually the perfect energy to step in and say, okay, enough is enough. We're cutting this. We're cutting this. We're cutting this. I don't care what you have to say about it. This is not up for discussion. We're cutting that, that, that. Oh, and that too. I've been wanting to cut that out for a long time. Yes. The Queen of Swords is kind of like your savior here because she's the no bullshit energy that's going to say to you, you don't need this. I don't care how diplomatic, diplomatic the king is trying to be here. You don't need this. Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. That's what the queen is saying at this point. And that really may be the energy that you're in. I do feel like there's a little bit of reluctance for some of you. But ultimately, follow your intuition, follow your inner guidance here, okay? Because honestly, if you really feel on the inside that you really don't need something or you really don't need to pursue something or you really don't need to do uh, a specific practice or whatever, however that resonates for you, then don't let your ego get in the way and say, no, this is how it's supposed to be done. No, no, follow your, follow your guidance, follow your intuition follow your inner light. Everybody's got their own inner light, okay? Second set of surrounding energies for the first half of your reading here, Sagittarius, you got, ah, the Queen of Cups. Yes, hunty. Now, Queen of Cups is Cancerian energy. The Queen of Swords is Libra energy. And I forgot to say this, but the Hermit is Virgo energy. In any way, these, re these energies could be resonating with you or you may have, char uh, may have them in your chart. Um, you could be dealing with them in some way, maybe like a person. The Queen of Cups is talking about that intuition. The Queen of Cups is the, is the second most psychic individual, psychically aware, intuitively connected individual other than the High Priestess. And the Queen of Cups here is talking about following your heart, following your emotions, following your intuition, looking into yourself and saying, what really brings me joy? Just looking and channeling this energy of the Queen of Cups for you, Sagittarius, it, like, it's literally filling me with so much joy right now. That's what you need to be following. Your intuition, your guidance. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Even though they can kind of seem as complete opposites and maybe even enemies sometimes, the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords are very much working in tandem. Because I do see the Queen of Swords as kind of like a guard dog 
or a watchful energy saying, look, th 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 no, pay attention to your intuition. Let me handle all the things that need to be cut away so that you don't get clouded in, so that your intuition doesn't get clouded, okay? They are definitely, definitely working together at this point. And I say they could potentially be seen as enemies because the Queen of Cups is all about the motion, emotion and the Queen of Swords is all about logic. And neither and some and they are like on opposite ends of the spectrum. The Queen of Swords wants really nothing to do with emotion. Like emotion is not gonna get me anywhere. We gotta talk about this logically. The Queen of Cups is talking about, I'm all emotion, I'm all intuition. Logic really doesn't even fit in my realm much of the time. But in fact, they are working together for you in this situation, okay, Sag? Queen of Cups is coupled with, damn, there's that Wheel of Fortune again. So the other thing that's coming through here between the Queen of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune, keep a close eye on your emotions, okay? In no way are we asking you to stifle your emotions. No, you need to feel them. You need to honor them. But that doesn't mean that you have to completely identify with them. Just let them pass through, okay? The other thing that this is talking about here is maintaining your alignment. And the one and the best way to understand where your alignment is or what you're aligning to is how it feels. Ah. If you feel good, if you are looking at the, your life circumstances, understanding that this wheel of fortune is turning and there are many changes that are coming through to your, in your life, the best thing for you to do is to approach the energies of the wheel of fortune with the highest vibration that you possibly can because that will help you get the best possible turnout from that wheel turning and eventually stopping in a place to bring you the next chapter into your life. Yes? I hope that made sense. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Sag, you have the Nine of Cups. Ooh, there's that debauchery I was talking about. Ooh. All right, Sag, look. Be careful not to overindulge. Okay, I understand that there are going to be some moments in this period, this time period of your life, in this cycle that you're going through, in this change that you're experiencing, that are going to be very, very emotionally challenging. Try not to escape too much. I'm just going to leave it there. You figure out what's best for you in that sense. But the best thing for you to do right now is to feel as much of what you're going through as you possibly can, because that is going to help you cleanse and heal from it, okay? You can't heal something if you don't know what it is to begin with. And the best way to know what something is is to observe it and to feel it, okay? Now, your challenge also is satisfaction. I kind of see some of you are looking ahead at like the end game or the goal that you have in mind and kind of getting wrapped up again in this Ten of Wands energy of, oh my God, I have so much to do, or oh my God, that is so far away. How could I ever be happy and feel satisfied until I reach that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Don't do that either, okay? Because you're only setting yourself up for failure at that point. And the failure comes from the disappointment of not, as, uh, of not necessarily reaching your goal or not reaching it in the time frame that you want it or reaching some semblance of it, but it not being completely what you want it to begin with, okay? And all of that comes from expectation. So I guess what this is saying here is your challenge is, the ex is dealing with or handling the expectation of your satisfaction. Do your best to release yourself from all expectations. Yes? Nine of Cups is coupled with, oh, the Six of Cups. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Nostalgia, the past. For some of you, the challenge here is looking back on the past and being nostalgic, wanting some elements of the past to be recreated in the present or the future. But some of you are well aware of the fact that you have to completely leave that behind you. You have to find new satisfaction. And that is definitely outside of your comfort zone. I completely get it. But that's, that's how we grow. That's how we expand. Okay? Yeah, for some of you, you really just need to leave the past behind you. 
and start to create something new. For some of you, this could be friends, this could be family, uh, old colleagues, schoolmates, uh, co-workers, people from the past, circumstances from the past, and situations from the past that you don't necessarily want to let go of. But that's where that devil energy is coming in. The nostalgia is bringing you, it's almost like the nostalgia is almost making you stagnant. And so there could be situations that are happening for you in your life right now that are working on breaking you out of that stagnancy, but you're kind of resisting it because you don't want to let go of the feel good times. But you're going to have more feel good times that are going to maybe feel even better than the, than the times from the past, than the past, than what you're nostalgic of. It's going to feel better because you're a different person now than you were before and it's almost as if some of you are tr literally trying to stifle your own growth and expansion for fear of losing maybe losing connection to your roots okay i totally get that losing where you for forgetting where you may have come from or just fear of the unknown fear of what if what i'm moving towards in the future is not nearly as good as what i left what i'm left behind from the past but it's always going to feel like it's never, it's not going to be good enough if you're trying to keep yourself in an energetic state that you no longer are. Again, you are a different person now than you were back then. So please don't allow that to stop you from growing and changing and flourishing in brand new ways that you may not have even expected, okay? Closing message or potential outcome for the first half of your reading here, Sag. You've got, ooh, the Ace of Cups. You see, I told you there is something new coming forward for you, Sag, that is going to bring new excitement, new refreshment. Let the past go so that you can experience the new emotional fulfillment that is on the horizon for you. Ace of Cups is coupled with <laughs> the magician that's beautiful but you see now some of you what i'm seeing with the magician here is that some of you really want to let the past go really want to create something new and by golly man you're gonna do it gone sister gone brother like do your thing man manifest your fulfillment you are in control of that nobody else you are in control of your own fulfillment. And it really looks like some of you or whoever, whomever I'm channeling for right now, and however this resonates for you, y'all are really putting some sort of effort into manifesting the new. Because I really just feel like, it really just feels like you are fed up with the past. Good on you. Mm -hmm. All right. Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies for you, Sag, you've got the four of wands. Some of you may actively be moving. You may be looking to relocate, to buy a new home, to expand your home. Maybe you have some expansions in your family count. Maybe some kids are coming into play. Maybe some new, uh, some family members, some elder family members may be moving in with you, so you need more space. Um, that's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. The other thing with the Four of Wands, it's saying that you have a solid foundation here. I mean, you really have a solid foundation to really create the rest of your life from a masterful place. To me, uh, the Four of Wands energy coupled with the energy of the Three of Pentacles that came out in the pre-shuffle for you, Sag, this feels like confirmation, but also completion. Like you really have solidified your foundation and now you literally could go anywhere. You literally could go anywhere from here. And that's what you're working on. The Hermit. And that's why some of you are experiencing some sort of fear or devil-like energy that are trying to keep you down. Another thing, I don't really know why um, religion is coming forward so strongly here. It's going to resonate with somebody out there. Okay. Uh, but another thing that I want to point out that organized religions or massive established communities or um, hierarchies or anything like that, very much hierophant, the hierophant energy, they tend to base their methods on fear-mongering, 
i.e. the devil, trying to instill fear in you to keep you from realizing your full potential and basically trying to keep you under their thumb so they can continue to control you. Ah! Uh, but you see, between the Queen of Swords, the King of Swords, the Magician energy here, and this Four of Wands, woo! Oh, sorry guys. And ugh, this Four of Wands, oh, please don't mind the mess back there on my, <laughs> on my dresser. The Four of Wands, you have a solid fa enough fo of a foundation to go off in your own direction. The Four of Wands is coupled with Yes, temperance. This is a good time for you to take a break. This is not Four of Swords energy. Four of Swords energy would literally be taking a nap, taking a break, a respite, um, a moment when opposing parties or sides that are, that are at war with each other, basically, go off to their own corners and, you know throw down a temporary truce to rest, recuperate, and reorganize, get their strategy together. It's not that energy specifically. However, it is a similar energy because temperance here, number one, talks about patience, okay? Having patience. Number two, talks about alchemization. And so that needs some time, even though time is an illusion. It needs time to complete itself. Okay, so this would actually be a really good time for you just to, to take a break, to rest, probably really um, focus on meditating and focus on meditating in terms of connecting with yourself. Yes, fortifying those lines of communication between your conscious mind and your subconscious or your higher and lower selves, whatever. And when I say higher and lower selves, it doesn't make either one better than the other because they are integral parts of each other integral parts of each other that make up the whole that is you. Um, but this would really be a good time to meditate and rest, relax, uh, focus on your foundation, really feel your foundation and communicate with your foundation and say, okay, have a conversation with yourself. Okay, with the foundation that I've laid here, what would be the ideal thing to plant or ideal thing to start manifesting from this foundation? What is really going to flow or grow or flourish the most within this personal foundation that I have here? That's what I'm feeling. Oh, also, Sag, this is you. <laughs> I'm so caught up in the message, I completely forgot. You're coming out in your own reading here. Sagittarius, this is Temperance is your card. Ooh, good for you, Saggy. All right. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Sag and Metazical. We have the Page of Cups. Yes, this is definitely the time for you to be the dreamer. The Page of Cups is the dreamer energy. It can also talk about reconciliation. Eh, there may be some of that in there, but for you specifically, Sagittarius, I feel like this is the time for you, this really is a time for you to dream. Literally, this is what I was just, just saying in thinking about meditating on what would be best to start growing from this foundation that you laid for yourself or building, I guess you could say. Yes, building, especially with the Three of Pentacles energy that came out in the pre-shuffle, yeah? Uh, the Page of Cups is coupled with, wow, death, whoo <laughs> whoa. But you see, chance, change and transformation is here. So as you're going through, the, and this is also Scorpio energy. Also, death is Scorpio energy. Page of Cups is Pisces energy. Could also be another water sign, Cancer, or Scorpio. Um, but death here is saying, coupled with the Page of Cups, you're going through a transformation, all right? The world here is saying one cycle is ending and another is about to start. So take this opportunity as you're going through this process of death and rebirth, take this opportunity to really focus on your dreams. What do you want to manifest in this new cycle? Your challenge in the second half of your reading here the star, more Aquarius energy that came out with the queen, I'm sorry, the king of swords in the beginning of the reading. Um, the challenge here is to focus on your dreams, is to follow your inner light, to follow your inner guidance, even though you're going through this pretty dark time. I mean, it can be dark, but just because it's dark, that doesn't mean it has to be bad. The dark could be a great place for you to just really rest, 
because you're not, you don't have the, I guess you could say, overstimulation of the light keeping you going. Like, use this dark er or dark-ish time to really focus on your dreams. But the challenge here is to follow that inner light that is the source or the aspect of source that is planted securely and firmly within you. That is an intrinsic part of you that gives you your own sense of authority in this life. We all have it to certain, to, to differing, in differing ways. They, we all have that authority that source embodies. We all have a piece of that in us. And it is our, it is upon us, it is our decision and even, I guess, dare, dare I say, our responsibility to choose to follow that. But that can be very challenging, especially when the devil's around telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you have to be this way, it has to be that way, blah, 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 blah. Fuck that, man. Follow your guidance, which is the star. The star is coupled with eight of wands. Okay. The, open, the air is open and clear. You're ready to move forward, Spirit is saying. Let your inner guidance guide you. Your closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading. Here you've got the Knight of Wands. There you are again, Sag. And actually, excuse me, the Knight of Wands is kind of the energy that what I was picking up on maybe when the Knight of Swords came out, or maybe it was before the Knight of Swords, but... Um, the Knight of Wands energy is what I was kind of picking up on on this like new, I guess I could call it a spiritual crusade that you're going on. But this is the energy, the, to me, this is the energy of a light worker or a light warrior. All right. Someone that's, that's, that's got their torch lit and is now championing, championing whatever that torch represents, which could really just be your inner light, your inner, exp your expression of, of the source within right? That's what I see with the Knight of Wands, not some sort of wishy-washy here or there energy. Now, it kind of could be that energy because a light worker or a light warrior or a spiritual warrior is not the type of energy to be, to get rooted anywhere. Like they go where they're needed. And that's also why I see the, the pages and the knights in the court cards as the mutable signs, which would be you, Sagittarius. You go or you can go wherever you're needed and be successful. Get the job done, boop, boop, one and done, and bam, you're off to the next one. That's kind of where the Knight of Wands gets that reputation from. Now, it also could represent somebody that is just like wishy-washy and not really for commitment, is just running around playing games, this, that, and the other. But that's not what I'm picking up here for you in this moment. This is your light worker status, okay? your spiritual warrior, even if you don't resonate with that specifically, that is, that's the energy that I'm picking up for you right now because you're making a massive change in your life. Knight of Wands is coupled with, hey, the Three of Cups, the combination, the balance of body, mind, and spirit. These, this is also a celebration. A celebration, I would say on behalf of the universe, the universe is kind of congratulating you in reaching this level and working on getting to the point where you can, in fact, make these decisions for yourself instead of allowing dogma to decide for you or the status quo, the establishment, the beaten path. You're stepping off the beaten path and you're making your own. You're beating your own path. And the universe is congratulating you, cheering you, honoring you, like egging you on, like supporting you. Raw, yes, keep going, Sag. Excellent. Let's get into now your oracle guidance to close out this reading for you, Sag. Ooh. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Here we go. Best message, please, to close out this reading spirit for... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Okay. I'm going to take this one. Sorry, that totally just like threw a bunch of stuff. Shit's just flying everywhere for this reading for you, Sag. It's so crazy. Okay, 
Uh, we have card number 31. Sorry, guys, with the whole mic situation. We have card number 31. Trust yourself. Ooh, whoa, I opened right to it. That's cool. Okay, here we go. Trust yourself. You are wise. You know how to grow even without knowing how you know. Like the ancient forests, sp spectacular galaxies, and the acorn that becomes the oak, there is a natural intelligence for growth that is beyond logic and reason. It just happens. At the deepest levels, we are governed by this force. So it is palp. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. At the deepest levels, we are governed by this force that is so palpable, it literally shapes the world. At the same time, it is so invisible that sometimes we forget its presence and worry that our minds have to work everything out for life to happen and for us to be all right. We can become unnecessarily anxious about our affairs and how life will unfold. This oracle brings the message that you are growing. You really are. Don't doubt it. Even if you don't see it yet, remember that so much is happening when the seed is still unbroken in the ground. Below the earth, it is summoning up all the might, power, and force it needs to push above the topsoil and burst up into the light. It is essential for anything good to happen later on. Yet, we don't see any of that. We just have to trust that things will happen when the time is right. You are also being asked to trust in yourself. You know how to grow. Don't ever think things, don't, I'm sorry, don't overthink things. It won't help you. Don't worry so much. You are doing a great job in this game of life. When you trust yourself, you relax and you can heed your own wisdom, insight, and messages much more clearly and easily. This oracle comes with a particular guidance. You have a big destiny this lifetime and much to experience. Sometimes you make the error of judging something that is unpleasant as negative or a mistake. It isn't. It's just part of your greater hunger for experience. It doesn't mean you have to have a lot of it, but when you do, don't shame yourself for it. Simply let it be. Maybe it's just fertilizer for your next step on the path. It's all part of your life process, and it's all a sign of growth. This oracle is also telling you not to resist any points of instability in your life. This even applies to your most treasured relationships or creative projects. That invisibility i'm sorry that instability is just a growing pain because more consciousness more love and more light wants to infiltrate and pervade all parts of your life the instability is not a sign of sickness but of growth don't fret instead choose to flow and grow there goes that card again there you have it sagittarius um there's another message that's coming through. This three of cups keeps falling off the table. And when I pick it back up, it wants to be in reverse. I feel like some of you are really letting go of some sort of party atmosphere or some sort of um, group of people that are just debaucherous. I mean, whatever. I, I, I can listen. I love a good party. I'm not judging. But what I'm saying here is for some of you, you're actually fine. You're, you're kind of you're finally deciding to let some of that go which is a good thing. So trust yourself. Anyway, much love to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning again, tuning in. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. With that, I hope you guys have a great month and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of August. Yes, take care. Bye.